All right, we are live for another mental health work through. It is Monday morning, so I want to make sure that we are all set up for we're starting off our week. Um, we had a couple technical difficulties, so we're starting a little bit later than normal, but as you're joining, and I see people joining in, um, let me know where you're coming from, where you're tuning in from, and also, just for a little fun this week, leave an emoji that describes how you are feeling this morning. <laughs> So I imagine that I'm going to see all different kinds of emojis. I feel like I, this morning I'm showing up with the dancer emoji. I'm feeling excited for the day. But yesterday it was more the emoji. It was the sad emoji before. Um, I see people tuning in from Atlanta, from Alabama. Fantastic. Los Angeles, I'm from LA. Uh, speaking of me, if we have not yet met, my name is Katie Horwich, and I am a writer, I'm a speaker, and I am one of the coaches on Aptive. I teach indoor cycling, elliptical classes, treadmill, and probably what most of you all are doing right now, outdoor walking and running. I have loved created cl creating classes for you throughout my time at Aptive, but especially right now, because I feel like we are more connected than ever. I see someone tuning in from Missouri who says that the emoji that's describing them today is a yawning face. I don't think I've actually ever used that emoji. I feel like I should put that in my rotation. Someone has a meditation emoji, a smiling emoji, a monkey covering its eyes. Uh, looks like we are all feeling different ways today. Someone with a strong emoji. Awesome. So I feel like this is a fun and maybe somewhat silly, but really interesting way to just prove that everybody and every body is different. And we are all processing, processing these days completely differently. Like I've talked about in the past, this is our for now normal. It's not our new normal. New normal comes after all of this is over and we walk out our doors and we hug, like gosh, remember hugs. And right now is the for now. So what these mental health work throughs have been, if this is your first time tuning in, uh, there is no physical workout. The physical workout comes later. That's at 1 p.m. with my dear friend, Jamie. This is a workout for your head and your heart so that you can move forward fearlessly into the week with a positive and proactive mindset. Who's tuned in to the ones before? Anyone here who's been joining us week after week? I see some familiar names coming in. I'm gonna wave to a few of you right now. Awesome, we've got people from Japan, from Huntington Beach, from Seattle, Wisconsin all over the place. This is so cool that we're able to connect this way. So if you've tuned in before, you know that this is an interactive experience. So if you already have a pen and a piece of paper or a notebook or a journal, you are already ahead of the pack. If you have not gotten one yet, go and get one right now. And if we start before you're back, no worries. This is going to be up on the Aptive channel for the next 24 hours. And then most of these have been uploaded to our Aptive Instagram or our Aptive YouTube. So you can go to Aptive Live on YouTube and you can see not only the past mental health work throughs, but you can see all of the different workouts that all of the other fantastic coaches have been doing during this time. So if you've been tuning in, you know that we have talked about everything from navigating your emotions and fear to Get, getting all of the thinks that are up in your brain, if you're like me, you have a lot of thinks on a day-to-day -day basis, getting those down on paper and doing something positive and proactive with them. Today, I wanted to go back to a little bit of what we were discussing in the very first mental health work through. And that was all about creating structure and creating routines. And I wanted to go back to it today because I realized that a, this is week four of our mental health work throughs, and a lot has happened since then. And more than that, 
For us here in New York, this is beginning week six of quarantining and staying at home. And some of you have been doing this for way longer than us. So just like those emo emojis were showing and proving, we all are coming at our days with different feelings, with different thoughts, with different emotions. And while I truly believe that we should not be putting pressure on ourselves to be hyper productive, hyper proactive, hyper driven during this time. The lighting is kind of weird in here. That's okay. We're all figuring this out together. Um, while I do believe that it is important to be allowing ourselves grace and space during this time to think and feel exactly the way that we show up with during the day and move through it at the speed we need to move through it, I am also someone who love structure and routines and sometimes just creating something, whether I stick to it verbatim every single day or not, or not, um, that can help me feel a sense of self-pride, a sense of accomplishment, and it can give me a roadmap that I know I have at hand when I'm ready to utilize it. Does this all make sense? Cool. So if you have your pen and your paper, I would love for you to turn to a new page. And we are going to create what I call in my own life, my daily protocols. Now I was on a podcast recently and people asked, uh, it was a group podcast, and people asked what the other people were doing to create structure and routines. Now, I've been working from home on and off for the majority of my adult life, and maybe some of you are in the same boat. So in some ways, it might be an easy transition or an easier transition for you right now to be working all from home. But even if you are someone who is used to this being your office, there's a really good chance that there are aspects of your day that have changed drastically, whether that is, you know, going out and getting a coffee from your favorite coffee shop or going to the gym and seeing your gym buddies there as you're plugging in your active workout, or maybe you are at home with a roommate or partner or kids that you're not used to managing space as a collective unit. So no matter whether you have been working from home for a really long time or this is your first time, I hope that this can help create some structure for you. So what I would love for you to do is I would love for you to write down, there we go, I would love for you to write down ideal slash awesome work day looks like this. So my ideal awesome work day looks like this. And I would love for you to think back to five weeks ago, six weeks ago, seven weeks ago, two, three months ago, and think about what did your most awesome work day look like? Literally, what did it look like? I talk about the way that you want to feel a lot. Now I want to see the actual things, the actual steps. So start in the morning. What time did you wake up? What did you do in your mornings? What were the first things that you did while you were getting ready for work, as you were commuting? Keep losing connection here, but I'm going to pause when I see that it's paused so that we're not missing anything. So what did your day look like? So I did this once with a friend of mine and what she wrote down was stuff like this. I wake up at 6 a.m. every morning. I wash my face, I brush my teeth. These are the different products that I use on my face. I get out the door after I get dressed and I go to the coffee shop around the corner and this is the drink that I get. After that, I get onto the subway. This is what I listen to on the subway. And then she said, I get to work and the first part of my day, so I would love for you literally to do this like hour by hour. She said, from about nine to noon, 
I'm in meetings and I'm on the phone and I'm in the office interacting with other people. Then after that, I have my lunch break. This is what I do on my lunch break. Then the next half of my day is all about pitching projects. It's all about thinking, writing, doing analytics, stuff like that. And she said, usually I wrap up the day around 5.30, 6. And then I will go to a workout class at the gym after that. Then after that, this is what I do. This is how I wind down, all of that. So once you have everything, I would love for you to look at your day and look at the common themes. So I feel like we've talked about this before, extroversion versus introversion. Doesn't necessarily mean that you are super, super gregarious all the time to be an extrovert. It doesn't mean that you're super quiet all the time to be an introvert. Extroverts typically gain their energy, recharge their battery or charge their battery up by interacting with other people. Introverts, on the other hand, charge their battery up by being alone. Now there is something called an ambivert where you are equal parts both. If you want to learn more about this, I have a podcast about it, the Women Against Negative Talk podcast. There are also a billion articles written on the internet. You can Google it after this. But what I found was interesting when I did this with my friend is that the first part of her day was filled with people. And again, this is an ideal work day. So I said to her, do you like that? Would you consider yourself an extrovert? And I knew I considered an extrovert. She said, yes, totally. So the beginning of her day involved other people. What she was doing before this was she was interacting with people later on in the day and she found that she was so drained. So what we did is we created a protocol for her. I call these my my daily protocols. You can call this your routine. You can call them blocks. So from seven to nine, that was her morning protocol and that involved the skincare routine that involved making herself a version of the coffee that she would get, listening to the music or the podcast that she would listen to before she was going to work. And then the next part of her routine, nine to noon, that was her people protocol. So that was where she was going to gain the most energy through the day if she was interacting with other people. That's when I suggested she take the most of her meetings if she could. That's when I suggested that she had phone catch-ups with friends if she was able to. That's when I suggested she had Zoom calls or FaceTimes and she had that person-to-person interaction so that she would have energy in the rest of her day. Then we recreated that. So from 12 to one, there was her lunch routine. And then from one to 5.30, actually, pause, one to 4.30, that was her that was that was her work protocol what did we call it that's what we called her her internal work protocol so that was all of the internal work the thinking the analyzing the writing the emails the pitching and then the reason why i said pause and i went back is because that last hour i built in a wrap up protocol for her So that last hour was her time to look at what she had done throughout the day and say, is there anything that I need to wrap up from my day? Then after that, she said that she actually loved working out after work. So I said, amazing, keep that. If you loved it before, there's a really good chance that there's a reason you loved it. And from 5.30 to about 7, because I gave her some room to change into her clothes, to get her home gym set up, That was her workout time. Then after that, it was her wind down evening protocol of mimicking what she would do in the evenings before this for now normal. So cooking dinner or any phone calls that she would have, anyone that she would catch up with, any TV or movies that she would watch, books that she would read, all of that. So that was hers. And I wanted to give two examples of this because we are all different. For me, She's an extrovert. I 
am an introvert. And if you've listened to my classes, you might be like, what are you talking about? I feel like I know you better than you know you, Katie. You are so extroverted. I have qualities of my personality that are extroverted, but I am an introvert. I recharge from the inside out and I feel the loneliest actually when I am around a lot of people for you know a prolonged amount of time and all of us are different as to what prolonged means. So I found that when I first trans uh, when I first started working from home and I transferred my work environment from an actual office to my home, I was kind of all over the place and I found that a lot of my calls and things that I was scheduling, I was doing earlier in the day because I was told by, you know, somebody else who this worked for them that I should schedule the bulk of my meetings and obligations towards the beginning half of the day so that I had the rest of the day to do my work. That is not what worked for me at all. And so I looked at my day, I looked at where I got my energy and what I would consider an awesome work day would be. That would involve getting my workout in the morning. I'm not an evening exerciser. That would involve the classes that I taught that were midday class that or like 1030 to noon that that uh, that transitional class where I was starting to interact with people. And then I did a ton of internal work for hours at a time. Then after that, I had really great meetings to end the day and then I would start to wrap up. So the protocol that I created for my introvert self looks like this. From 7 to 9 a.m. That is my couple's protocol. That is the protocol that I have with my husband Jeremy where we listen to jazz music in the morning, where we drink coffee, where we <laughs> now we sync our calendars for the week, where we read the news together. It's a day to, it's a protocol to connect in the morning. After that, from nine to noon, and again, this is different for everybody. So nine to 11 to noon, that is my mental morning, oops, mental morning protocol. So that is the time that I use to journal, to write for my own creative expression. That's the time that I work out where I gain my energy. That's the time where I sit and think sometimes for a couple hours at a time. And toward the end, it is not a coincidence that I've been doing these mental health work throughs at 11 a.m. and why I've been doing the lives on my own channel around 11, 12, 1. It's because that was the time before that on my best days I felt like I was transitioning and I was I had gotten the energy that I needed to interact with other people. Then after that, from 12 to 4, that is what I call my power protocol. That is where I grind and I hustle and I do my work and I do it the best. Toward the end of that, that's where I try and schedule meetings. And then from four to five or four to six, that is my wrap up protocol. That's when I start to wrap up the things that I've been doing throughout the day. And I transition into my evening protocol, which I have an entirely new playlist that I listen to, that I would listen to if I was, you know, coming back home from work on the subway. That's where I you know, start, we start cooking dinner together or we decide, you know, we're right now where we're going to order from to support the local restaurants and businesses. And that's where I start to wind down. Now, the thing about this and why I love this method is because it doesn't tell you exactly what to do during each of these times, but it gives you a frame so that you can maximize your energy in the way that you are able to. Now, I did a work day because I'm finding that that's what most people are struggling with, but you can also do this with a weekend day. So think of your ideal, most awesome weekend day. What does that involve? When do you work out? When do you see your friends or your family? When are you on the phone? When do you watch movies or play games? 
When do you do certain things with your kids? What do you do on an ideal day? And then you can mimic that and create your weekend protocols. Again, everybody's is going to be different because everybody or every and everybody is different. Let's see. So is this ideal or what we're doing now? That is a great question. This is ideal. And uh, this user said, so is this ideal or what we are doing now? Because kids mess this up big time. I get that. This is actually a great exercise to do with your kids as well because just like our schedules are up in the air and getting messed up by other people and people you know trying to FaceTime us when we're like I can't FaceTime right now I'm doing this other thing our kids had a schedule way before this too so ask them like what did an ideal school day look like to you what did you do how that make you feel when did you do those things? And then what does an ideal weekend day look like for you? And throw that power back to them and say, like, look, we get to design our days right now. We always talk about if we had more time to do this, if I could only do that, if every day could just be like this day that I had today, that would be amazing. So recreate that day, make it a family exercise. And I bet you that as they create that, and you create yours, you will be able to find some overlap where, you know, maybe not everything fits the way that you would want to right now. Because again, this is the for now normal. It's not the new normal and it's not our old normal. However, you've both got those structures or you've all got those structures in place to do something productive and proactive with. And right now we are all feeling like we are just grasping for some sort of sense of normalcy, control, and when we find ourselves grasping, that's when that negative self-talk starts to come in, right? Because we're all going through this collectively traumatic experience right now, and when things feel up in the air, we go to a negative place in order to protect ourselves from what our mind and our body is deeming, you know, danger out in front of us. It's not danger, it's just uncertainty. So if we can give ourselves a little semblance of certainty, or at least show ourselves that we can create some sort of sense of certainty in uncertainty, whether we end up following it every day or not, then things will start to change slowly and surely. And they might seem like really small changes in the moment, but they are big changes in the long run. So this is going to be up on the Aptive Instagram for the next 24 hours. If you liked this, make sure that you keep tuning in. Aptive is posting all of the different workouts, mental health work throughs that we're doing, all the stuff that we're doing on our channel right now. And again, if you've missed a bunch, A, welcome. This is a wonderful morning club that we've I guess started over the last four weeks. Uh, and B, make sure that you check out the Aptive YouTube so that you can tune in to the past mental health work throughs. I am so grateful that you showed up today. You have become one of my favorite ways to start off the week. I'm so grateful that we have this community. Make sure that you're following me at Katie Horwich and make sure that you're following all of the other trainers too because they're doing some amazing things over on their accounts. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I adore you. Move forward fearlessly. Spread the good word and be the you you know you're meant to be. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.